Well, good morning and uh, a happy new life. Uh, we're turning to Acts chapter number 9 this morning. Uh, a passage that, well, it might not speak of a new year, but it definitely speaks of a new life. And one that grabbed Saul of Tarsus later to become Paul, uh, completely and utterly by surprise. So let's read together a few verses in Acts chapter 9. And verse 3 says, And he journeyed. Or as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone round him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are per persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And then a little later on, as the story of the conversion of Saul of Tarsus unfolds, we get down uh, to verse number 20, and it says, Immediately he, that is Paul or Saul, preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Then all who heard were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those who called on this name in Jerusalem and has come here for that purpose so that he might bring them bound to the chief priests. And we do look to God to add his blessing to his word this morning. So Acts chapter 9 describes the conversion of Saul of Tarsus, a man who in this chapter discovers dramatically a new life. He's a man who is full of self-confidence. He's a man who is out to put everybody else right. A man who seems on the surface to have all of the answers to all of the questions. And yet, as is so often the case with that kind of person, there is often underlying a deep lack of insight and a deep ignorance. And of course, uh, Saul, I suppose, like so many in that position, is ignorant of one key area and aspect of his life. He's ignorant of his own lack of understanding. He's ignorant of the limitations of his own knowledge. And we often find people who have no perspective on the limitations of their own understanding get full of confidence and pride and they really don't understand what they fail to understand. Uh, someone has once said that the true mark of wisdom and knowledge is to have insight into what we do not know. Well, Paul lacked that. And as you go down through Acts chapter number 9, there are probably at least three things that the Apostle Paul does not know. First of all, he does not know himself. And he gets a dramatic wake-up call in Acts chapter number 9. A, a, a man who thinks he's doing the will of God, he thinks he's doing good. In fact, he thinks he's doing the very best, getting rid of those who he thinks are blaspheme, blaspheming the name of God. Uh, and yet he discovers in Acts chapter number 9 that so far from being uh, the top of the religious pile, later on he'll describe himself a, a, in those days as a Pharisee of the Pharisee, a teacher of the teachers, uh, one who, in his own eyes, kept the law, uh, and uh, one who uh, seemed to be absolutely righteous in his own eyes. Yet in Acts chapter number 9, he has a wake-up wake call from the God of heaven that, in fact, instead of doing the will of God, he's actively opposing the will of God. He, in fact, is actively attacking the God that he thinks he is uh, promoting. And uh, it is that God of heaven who speaks to Saul in that condition. Uh, it speak, the, the God of heaven speaks to this man who, in fact, in the eyes of God, is a murderer and a blasphemer. He does not truly understand the depravity of his own heart. Secondly, he does not know God. Uh, he asks a question of the light that uh, uh, springs into his life. Who are you, Lord, is the question he asks in Acts chapter 9. And the answer, of course, to that changes not only the life of Saul of Tarsus, but changes the whole destiny of the, the whole of the world, in fact, because the answer to that question as to who God is, is I am Jesus. That changes Paul's complete, out, uh, 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 complete uh, outlook on who God is. And from that uh, comes the greatest evangelist that Christianity has ever known. And that literally changes the history and the destiny of millions of people throughout the world. He did not know God. The God of heaven that he 
thought was there was not the God of heaven who was there. And the God of heaven is the Jesus of the Bible. The God of heaven is the Jesus who revealed himself in the incarnation that we thought about uh, last week. The God of heaven is the God who did those things that we would expect God to do. He healed uh, the leper. He uh, cured the incurable. He gave uh, sight to the blind that had never had sight. He raised the dead. He satisfied human souls. He knew what was going in uh, uh, on in the hearts of men and he provided a unique way of salvation. That is the God of heaven. That is the Jesus uh, of the Bible. And thirdly, of course, Paul not only did he not know who he was and not only did he not who, know who God was, but didn't know where he was going. You know, he thought he was going to a place called Damascus. He thought he was going there to get rid of the Christians. He thought he had a mission, uh, but actually he didn't know what he was doing. And by the time he ends up uh, at his final destination, he's blind. He doesn't know where he is. And God has a different plan and a different purpose uh, for uh, Paul or for Saul. I suppose maybe like you and I, uh, you could have asked Saul at the beginning of that journey in Acts 9, well, what, what lies ahead, uh, Saul? And he would have given you a set of answers. Well, here I am doing the will of God. Uh, I'm going to get rid of all of these uh, nuisance Christians. I'm going to set everybody right in the world. And uh, um, we're really going to do a great work for God. And of course, by the end of Acts chapter 9, that's nothing like uh, what, uh, in fact, uh, God has planned for Saul uh, of Tarsus. By the end of Acts 9, Saul, first of all, understands who he is. He understands that he's utterly lost, that he's in the opposition to God, that his heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, as the word of God sells it, says elsewhere, that he is not seeking after God, but rather he's rebelling against God, a bit like that, uh, a bit like a spoiled child, or a bit like some of these hard uh, minded people that you come across, you know, if you try and push them in a particular direction, they push against and go in the opposite. That was the mindset of the Apostle Paul. And by the end of Acts chapter 9, he has an insight into who he is, rebellious against God, in opposition to God. He has a great and glorious vision of the, who, whom the God of heaven is. He's not just the lawgiver of the Old Testament, but he's also the Christ of the cross. He's the saviour of mankind. He's the only one who is able to open up the door of heaven and he also by the end of Acts 9 knows what God's plan and purpose is for him. He has a vision uh, into that. He knows by the end of this section that his mission is to preach Christ in the synagogues, that he is the son of God and he's able uh, by the end of that not only to tell them about the Lord Jesus but he's able to lead them to the Lord Jesus because he had a personal living experience of Christ on the road to Damascus. So I wish you, uh, in uh, the coming months, a very happy new year. But, you know, if you've never met Jesus Christ yourself, I do uh, truly wish you a very happy new life. Thanks very much for being with me this morning. Thank you.